Hello and welcome to this first video of the lesson, Underwriting. Here we will learn about the basic concepts of underwriting, non-medical underwriting and medical underwriting. The following topics will be covered here. Let us begin with learning the purpose of underwriting. Underwriters assess the risks and make premium calculations based on the extent and level of risks. The purpose of underwriting is twofold. First is to prevent anti-selection or selection against the insurer. The term selection of risks refers to the process of evaluating each proposal for life insurance in terms of the degree of risk it represents and then deciding on granting the insurance and its terms. Anti-selection is the tendency of people to seek out insurance eagerly to gain in the process because they suspect that their chance of experiencing a loss is high. And second is to classify risks and ensure equity among risks. The term equity means that applicants who are exposed to similar degree of risks must be placed in the same premium class. Life insurers use a mortality table to determine the premiums to be charged. To assure equity, the underwriter engages in a process known as risk classification. That is, individual lives are categorized and assigned to different risk classes depending on the degree of risks they pose. There are four such risk classes. First is standard lives. These are the ones whose anticipated mortality corresponds to the standard lives represented by the mortality table. Second is preferred risks. These are the ones whose anticipated mortality is significantly lower than standard lives and hence can be charged a lower premium. Third is substandard lives. These are the ones whose anticipated mortality is higher than the average of standard lives but are still considered to be insurable. And fourth is declined lives. These are the ones whose impairments and anticipated extra mortality are so great that they cannot be provided with insurance coverage at an affordable cost. Underwriting or the selection process is said to take place at two levels. First is at field level. It may also be known as primary underwriting. It includes information gathering by an agent or company representative to decide whether an applicant is suitable for granting insurance coverage or not. The agent plays a critical role as primary underwriter. He is in the best position to know the life to be insured. And second is at underwriting department level. Underwriters of insurance companies take up the responsibility of underwriting policies at department level. Such underwriting involves specialists and persons who are proficient in this work. They consider all the relevant data on the case and decide whether to accept a proposal for life insurance or not and on what terms. Underwriters may use two types of methods for the purpose. First is judgment method. Under this method, subjective judgment is used, especially when deciding on a complex case. In such situations, the department may get the expert opinion of a medical doctor who is also known as a medical referee. For example, deciding whether to insure someone who has acute diabetes or not and on what terms. And second is numerical method. Under this method, the underwriter assigns positive rating points for all negative or adverse factors and vice versa. The total number of points so assigned will decide how much extra mortality rating or EMR has been given. Higher the EMR, more substandard the life is. If the EMR is very high, insurance may even be declined. Let us now consider the various kinds of decisions that underwriters may take with regard to a life proposed for underwriting. First, acceptance at ordinary rates, OR. 
it is the most common decision. This rating indicates that the risk is accepted at the same rate of premium as would apply to an ordinary or standard life. In such cases, the premium is charged as per tabular rates. Second, acceptance with an extra premium. It is the most common way of dealing with the large majority of substandard risks and involves charging extra premium over the tabular rate of premium. Third, acceptance with a lien on the sum assured. A lien is a kind of hold which the life insurance company can exercise in part or whole on the amount of benefit to be paid in the event of a claim. Lien implies that if the life assured dies from a specified cause, for example, relapse of the TB within a given period, only a decreased amount of death benefit would be payable. Fourth, acceptance with a restrictive clause. For certain kinds of hazards, a restrictive clause may be applied which limits death benefit in the event of death under certain circumstances. And fifth, decline or postpone. Finally, a life insurance underwriter may decide to decline a proposal for insurance. This generally happens when there are certain features which are so adverse that they considerably magnify the incidence of the risk. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Underwriting, we will discuss about various aspects of non-medical underwriting. Here we will cover the following concepts. Non-medical life insurance proposals typically get selected for insurance without conducting any medical examination which is required to check the insurability of a life to be insured. The case for non-medical underwriting lies in finding that medical examinations bring out adverse features but in a very small proportion, say one-tenth of the cases. Rest of the information can be obtained from leave records and other documents. It is important to note that the cost that can be saved by skipping such examinations is much more than the loss that a life insurer may suffer on account of extra death claims arising as a result of bypassing a medical test. However, non-medical underwriting calls for certain conditions that should be followed, such as First, only certain categories of females, like working women, may be eligible. Second, upper limits on sum assured may be imposed. For example, any case having a sum assured beyond 5 lakhs would be subjected to a medical examination. Third, age at entry limits may be imposed. For example, it is compulsory to get a medical examination done for persons above 40 or 45 years of age. Fourth, restriction may be imposed with regard to certain plans of insurance. For example, a term insurance may not be allowed under non-medical category. Fifth, maximum term of insurance may be limited to 20 years up to age 60. And sixth, class of lives. Non-medical insurance may also be allowed to certain specific categories of individuals, for example, employees of reputed firms, as these companies maintain proper leave records and may also have periodic medical examinations so that the employee's medical status can be verified easily. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Underwriting, we will learn about the rating factors of non-medical underwriting. Rating factors refer to various aspects related to financial situation, lifestyle, habits, family history, personal history of health of insured's life that may pose a hazard and increase the risk. Underwriting involves identifying these hazards and their likely impact and classifying the risk accordingly. Here we will learn about some of the rating factors, such as Female insurance Minors Large sums assured Age Moral hazard Occupation 
lifestyle and habits. Let us discuss them one by one. The underwriting norms for female lives are different from that of male lives. Hence the female community is accepted with a clause, whereas it is not so in case of men. Insurability of women is governed by the need for insurance and the capacity to pay the premiums. The reasons for this are First, more pregnancy-related deaths, especially in remote areas. Second, deaths due to domestic violence. And third, record of frauds. Minors have no contracting power of their own. Hence a proposal on behalf of minor has to be submitted by her parent or legal guardian. Three conditions would generally be sought while considering insurance for minors. First, whether they have a properly developed physique because poor growth of physique can arise as a result of malnutrition or other health problems posing grave risks. Second, proper family history and personal history. That is, if there are adverse indicators here, it may pose risks. And third, whether the family is adequately insured or not. That is, insurance of minors is generally pursued by families having a culture of insurance. One would thus need to be alert if the parents are not insured and ascertain why such insurance has not been taken. An underwriter needs to be aware of the cases in which the amount of insurance is very large relative to the annual income of the proposed insured. Generally, some assured may be assumed to be around 10 to 12 times of one's annual income. If the ratio is much higher, it raises the possibility of selection against the insurer. Large sums assured imply large premiums and thus raise the question about continuation of payment of such premiums. In general, it would be prudent to limit the amount of insurance so that the premium payable is a maximum of say one-third of an individual's annual income. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Underwriting, we will learn about some other rating factors of non-medical underwriting. As we know, the mortality risk is closely related to age. Thus, the underwriter needs to be careful while considering insurance for people who are of advanced age. An important part of the underwriting process is admission of age after verifying the proof of age. There are two types of age proofs, namely standard and non-standard. Standard age proofs are normally issued by a public authority on the following instances. The birth certificate, which is issued by a municipality or other government body. The school leaving certificate the passport and the employer's certificate. And where such proofs are not available, the proposer may be asked to bring a non-standard age proof. For example, the horoscope or a self-declaration. Moral hazard is said to exist when certain circumstances or characteristics of an individual's lifestyle, habits, reputation, financial situation and mental health indicate that he or she may intentionally engage in actions that increase the risk. There may be a number of factors which may suggest such moral hazard. First, when a proposal is submitted at a branch located far away from the place of residence of the proposed insured. Second, a medical examination is done elsewhere even when a qualified medical examiner is available near one's place of residence. And third, when a proposal is made on the life of another person without having a clear insurable interest or when the nominee is not the close dependent of the life proposed. In each of these cases, an inquiry may be made and the branch official may call the concerned agent for the same. Next, we will learn about the occupational hazards that can emanate from any of three sources. First, accidental hazard, 
which arises because certain kinds of job exposes a person to the risk of an accident. For example, circus artists, scaffolding workers, demolition experts, or film stunt artists. Second, health hazard, which arises when the nature of job is such that it gives rise to the possibility of medical impairment. For example, rickshaw pullers, call centers, etc. And third, moral hazard, which arises when a job involves proximity and can cause predisposition towards criminal elements or to drugs and alcohol. For example, dancer in a nightclub, an enforcer in a liquor bar, the bodyguard of a businessman with suspected criminal links, etc. Whenever the occupation falls in one of the categories of jobs that are listed as hazardous, the applicant for insurance would normally be required to complete an occupational questionnaire which consists of questions about specific details of the job, duties involved, and risks exposed to. Lifestyle and habits are the terms which cover a wide range of individual characteristics, for example, smoking, drinking alcohol, and substance abuse like drugs or narcotics, sedatives, and other similar stimulants. Generally, the agent's confidential reports and moral hazard reports are expected to mention if any of these characteristics are present in the individual's lifestyles which suggest exposure to risk. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Underwriting, we will learn about various aspects of medical underwriting. Here we will cover the following concepts. Let us now consider some of the medical factors that would influence an underwriter's decision. These are generally assessed through medical underwriting and often call for a medical examiner's report. Let us look at some of the factors that are checked here, such as family history, personal history, and personal characteristics. Let us discuss them one by one. The impact of family history on mortality risk has been studied from three angles. First is heredity. It refers to certain diseases that can be transmitted from one generation to another, say from parents to children. Second is average longevity of the family. It refers to certain cases where the parents have died early on account of certain diseases like heart trouble or cancer, so it becomes a pointer that the offspring may also not live long. And third is family environment. It is the environment in which the family lives which may cause exposure to infection and other risks. So the life insurers have to be careful while entertaining such cases of individuals with adverse family history. They may call for other reports and may impose an extra mortality rating. Personal history refers to past impairments of various systems of the human body which the life to be insured has suffered from. The proposal form for a life insurance typically contains a set of questions which inquire whether the life to be insured has been under treatment for any of the killing diseases or not. The major kinds of ailments that killer diseases include are Cardiovascular diseases Respiratory system like tuberculosis Excessive production and reproduction of cells Ailments of the renal system which include the kidney and other urinary parts Impairments of the endocrine system, like diabetes. Diseases of the digestive system and Diseases of the nervous system. Let us now learn about some personal characteristics to be taken in consideration under medical underwriting. They are as follows. First is build. A person's build consists of his height, weight, chest, and girth of the abdomen. For a given age and height, there is a standard weight that has been defined with respect to which a person is defined as overweight or underweight. Second is blood pressure. There are two measures of blood pressure, 
that is systolic and diastolic. And third is urine specific gravity. A reading of the specific gravity of one's urine can indicate the balance among various salts in the urinary system that is useful in diagnosing any malfunctioning of the system. Here is a quick look at the topics covered in this chapter. Thank you.